then phase three is actually doing it. And this is the uh, before strengthening, and this is after strengthening. It does not take much to do improve the capacity of the buildings for the either earthquakes or hurricane. Usually cost is somewhere 5% to high as, let's say 20% of a total building replacement cost. It's very cost effective. Having that those numbers of business interruptions and the financial damage, now you can talk to their CFOs and risk managers and they can they are start thinking seriously. Here's the results. This company estimated the followings. They calculated out that avoiding damage was $350 million and avoided business interruption, $400 million of production. So total avoided loss is over a billion dollars. And this is not even counted for market loss. That is actually a bigger chunk of it. So this plant was operation back in operation in four days. So it's a four days, we call BI, business interruption. Look the cost benefit, 75 and a one. It makes sense. The return of investment here is unbelievable. This for the, you know, this applied to both seismic and hurricanes and the flood. Now how the US public sector participates? This is what they do. Just like any other countries, we have a limited funding. We can just go out there sort of fixing those things. But you know what we do? We provide the guidelines. The FEMA publish all those documents to help engineers to do performance-based engineering. And that's such a key word, performance-based engineering. It's a very, very important concept because performance-based engineering means some cases you want to make a building much better than uh, building code said, or some cases even much less. So we'll cost benefit analysis. So that scores in the hospital, seismic risk mitigation program. This is actually the uh, very successful experience. So Istanbul government realized that their seismic earthquake risk is very large, and they request the World Bank and the EU to fund it. And they uh, successfully obtained a $1 billion total to do seismic risk mitigation in the country. So there are three different goals for this. One is increased emergency preparedness and response, actually building the emergency response centers and the communication uh, systems. That's number one goal. And two is retrofit and reconstruct priority public buildings, schools, hospitals, and historical monuments. And the third one is, it's also very important, technology transfer. So here's the results recently. 2007, we engineered or constructed over 250 schools so far. And 2008, will be 275 schools. And by 2014, there are several hundreds schools over 1,000 schools and hospitals will be seismically upgraded. So how did we do this? First thing we did is a risk audit. Just so based on the risk study, we pick 10% of the total population of the schools in Istanbul area to be seismically upgraded. So you have to pick the battle. So doing a risk audit to select the bottom 10%, which is going to have a most impact. This case is reduction of a death rate. Because this is schools and hospitals. It's nothing to do with the financial analysis here. This is the, uh, the schools and hospitals which are going to protect our kids. So conversion is death rate. And I think that's very important. When you communicate with the public or decision makers, especially for schools and hospitals, you need to talk in terms of a death. And have to be definite and have to be vivid. And that's how we can convince the uh, public to move. Now, this is actually a very key slide here. And it's an important one. And IPC is a local government, right? They hired also very local, okay, it's a local, but 
very competent engineers as a part of staff. Yeah, also, they hired the uh, local government hired an international expert, in this case is actually us, to actually assist them in technology transfer. But the main thing we did, though, is the actually the establishment of a design guideline. And kind of like what FEMA do in the United States, we didn't do any designing of it. We actually established with the guideline. That's an important one. And then let me show you how we actually did that. So what we did is that we formed a committee has leaders from a local engineering companies, respected engineers, and also the um, researching engineers from our universities are part of this 10 people committee and us and a couple of international consultants. And we actually wrote this publication and showing the design process of a performance-based engineering and also showing the uh, actual drawings how the school should be seismically upgraded. So now this become the documents approved by not only World Bank, but approved by local respected engineers and professors. And that is really important. Now this documents become the, uh, the consensus documents and engineers have started using it. And also what we did, we put this as a part of a contract. So any local companies sign up, they have to use this guideline per contract. And this is a very important aspect of a quality control. Then, emphasize on technology transfer. I think this is a very important one. Because remember, we only fixed in 10% of a population of the schools in Istanbul. That's peanuts, right? This need to be keep going. Need to be keep going. How to do that? Local now cities and counties, they can take over this program, at least technology point of view. 